Story recapped here. Today I'm gonna explain an action, drama, and horror film called Don't Breathe 2. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In an empty neighborhood in Detroit, a little girl walks away from a burning house and soon faints in the middle of the road. Eight years after the incident, the little girl, now known as Phoenix, runs in the middle of the woods as if she's hiding from someone. Upon checking her surroundings, Phoenix proceeds to escape when suddenly, a dog, Shadow, chases and causes her to jump over a high fence. Phoenix then sees a car with a gun inside and delightfully picks it up. However, the blind man, Norman Nordstrom, grabs her and steals the weapon from her telling her she's failed her survival test. Disappointed, Phoenix apologizes to her father and assures him that she will succeed next time. At the house, Phoenix is cutting Nordstrom's hair when she asks him if she got her white hair from him, to which Nordstrom responds that she got it from her mother. But when the girl asks if they've got any pictures of her mother, he tells her that the fire destroyed everything. Suddenly, a car arrives, opting for Phoenix to ask her father if she can go to town, given that she's passed all her braille exams. However, Nordstrom refuses and reminds her that she has failed the survival test. Determined, Phoenix tells him that they've been doing the test for three months and that she's even given him a killer haircut. But still, Nordstrom insists that she has to pass all the tests first. Outside, Hernandez delivers Nordstrom's plants and inquires if she can bring Phoenix to town that day. Nordstrom then quickly says that Phoenix isn't leaving, causing Hernandez to tell him to give the girl some freedom. So when Nordstrom heads inside, he finally lets Phoenix go with Hernandez. On their way to town, Phoenix sings a song that she believes her mother used to sing to her. Hernandez then lets Phoenix visit their abandoned house, where she leaves some flowers for her deceased mother and sings their song. Then suddenly, Phoenix hears some footsteps, causing her to run away before anything happens. Later on, a news report shows the authorities looking for a surgeon who's involved in a black market organ donor. Meanwhile, Phoenix sits on the swing with Shadow while staring at the kids in the playground roundabout. She then approaches them and shows them a smart hack that'll let them spin using the electric bike's wheel, making her and the kids have fun. However, it's all just in her head, for she's too shy to approach them. Then, when the kids head into the shelter, Phoenix goes into a public restroom and sees a creep named Raylan, who tells her she's pretty. He asks Phoenix for her name before introducing himself, but Phoenix courageously tells him that she doesn't care. Suddenly, Shadow shows up and growls at him, allowing Phoenix to inform Raylan that if she snaps her fingers, the dog will bite his groin. Frightened, the man apologizes for scaring her, but Phoenix tells him she isn't scared. As Phoenix walks past the man, Raylan touches the white streaks in her hair. Hernandez then notices Raylan and immediately asks Phoenix if she's okay, so Phoenix assures her that she is. But as soon as they leave, Raylan's gang follows their car. When they get home, Hernandez asks Nordstrom if she can take Phoenix out again next week. Unfortunately, he says she can't, so Phoenix heads inside with a heavy heart. Hernandez then tells him that he must not let Phoenix suffer from his own traumatic experiences, making the man realize she might be right. That night, Hernandez stops driving since a car blocks the only way to town. She then asks the vehicle driver to pull over, but she quickly senses she's in danger upon seeing Raylan with his gang. Being a veteran, Hernandez prepares to fight back using her gun, but eventually, Raylan moves his car, and Hernandez heads back to her truck. Worried, she immediately writes down Raylan's plate number, but when she's about to call 911, a gang member, Jim Bob, strangles her from the back seat before smashing her head with a hammer. At the same time, Phoenix still sulks in her room because of her strict father. When Nordstrom gives her lessons for the following month, she demands to go to an actual school. Nordstrom then tells her that homeschooling is safer, to which Phoenix argues that she doesn't want to be safe and wants to be a normal kid with friends instead. Worried, Nordstrom informs her that he can't take losing another daughter and that he's always there, but Phoenix tells him that he's not enough. She later on sits on the floor while staring at the Covenant Shelter's flyer, telling herself that a new home awaits her. On the other hand, Shadow growls outside after sensing someone in the darkness and goes to the woods to investigate. Meanwhile, three unknown men stand outside Phoenix and Nordstrom's house. At the same time, Nordstrom prepares Shadow's food by the porch and notices that Shadow isn't around. He then decides to look for him outside, unaware that Jim Bob and his buddy Duke are already inside his home. Upon realizing that Nordstrom is blind, Jim Bob searches the ground floor while Duke heads to the second floor in search of Phoenix. Upstairs, Phoenix sees Duke and quickly hides under her bed, trying to remain calm. Then suddenly, Duke takes the mattress up, but Phoenix has already moved under her cabinet nearby. She then removes her watch and throws it away right before it alarms, distracting Duke and allowing her to crawl back under the bed and out the door. 
However, she notices Jim Bob on his way up, so she rushes to turn off the light and hides by holding onto the railings. She then lands on the floor and heads for the door, but when she sees another man trying to get in and hears Jim Bob coming down the stairs, she immediately sneaks inside the storage room under the stairs. Luckily, Jim Bob fails to notice that Phoenix is hiding behind the boxes in the storage room. Meanwhile, Nordstrom finally locates Shadow in the woods and mourns after finding out he's dead. As Nordstrom cries, he touches Shadow's body and learns he's been shot so he immediately heads home. On the other hand, Phoenix gathers herself and tries to leave until Jim Bob fires a gun, scaring her. Jim Bob locks the door while pointing a gun at her. Then suddenly, Nordstrom breaks the glass on the door and strangles him from behind. As Nordstrom chokes Jim Bob, he orders Phoenix to go to the box before he gets wounded by a hammer. While Jim Bob deals with Nordstrom, Duke pursues Phoenix into the basement and even injures the girl after he forces the door open and sends her falling down the stairs. However, that doesn't stop Phoenix from locking herself inside a massive metal box with a small opening on top. At the same time, Nordstrom closes his wound using super glue in the garage, where Jim Bob's brother Jared locates him after tracing his blood. He then heads inside to look for the blind man, but Nordstrom eventually attacks him. Jim Bob hears Jared's screams, so he rushes to his brother's aid and finds him struggling to breathe, his mouth and nose sealed with super glue. To let the air out, Jim Bob grabs a screwdriver and punches a hole in Jared's cheeks. Curious, Jim Bob examines the place and discovers that Nordstrom used to be a Navy SEAL. Meanwhile, Jared breaks a jar and uses one of the shards to open his mouth. Enraged, Jim Bob and Jared search for the elusive blind man. Unaware that he's already made his way into the basement, Nordstrom then closes the basement door and leaves no way for the brothers to interrupt him. So Jim Bob warns Duke about his company before instructing Jared to call Raylan. Meanwhile, Duke tries to force the little girl out of the box by filling it with water, but gets pissed when the faucet suddenly turns off. He then threatens to kill Phoenix using a live wire unless Nordstrom comes out of hiding. So Nordstrom rolls a small LPG tank on the floor before surrendering. This makes Duke realize that he can't fire his gun. But thinking that the blind man doesn't stand a chance when it comes to fighting, he moves to reach for his knife. Of course, Nordstrom realizes what he's doing and attacks him with a metal rod, and the two men engage in a fight. They also accidentally turn the faucet back on, leaving Phoenix panicking and in a hurry to open the box door. Luckily, Nordstrom manages to pull the live wire out of the metal box and hides behind the table before causing an explosion. A little while later, Nordstrom wakes up with the water overflowing from the box. He immediately flips the heavy metal to spill the water and opens it, allowing Phoenix out. Scared, Nordstrom taps her face, begging her to breathe. Fortunately, Phoenix regains consciousness, and Nordstrom hugs her and feels relieved that she's alive. At the same time, Raylan and another gang member, Raul, arrive at the house. After destroying the basement door, Raul and Jared secure the exit while Raylan goes down the basement with Jim Bob, where they're surprised to see Duke's burnt body. On the other hand, Nordstrom carries Phoenix and heads into an escape door that leads them into their greenhouse. Unfortunately, Raul goes there too, so they hide until Raylan and Jim Bob arrive. Raylan then searches for them and talks to Phoenix, telling her that it's not him who she needs to be scared of, but the man she's with. Raylan also threatens Nordstrom by asking him to tell Phoenix the truth, so Nordstrom comes out and attacks him. However, Raylan knocks him to the ground and prepares to shoot him, but Phoenix quickly stops him. To calm the girl, Raylan removes his beanie and shows her the white streaks in his hair. Phoenix is obviously confused, so Raylan reveals he spent eight years in prison after the cops blamed him for burning their house. He claims that the blind man must have seen her somewhere and kept her, while on the other hand, Nordstrom remembers the time he first saw Phoenix on the street. He took her home, and while watching the news about the burnt house due to cooking some substance, Nordstrom held Phoenix and kept her as his own. In the present, Raylan tells Phoenix that he's been following her, and that Nordstrom must die for stealing her from him. However, Nordstrom headbutts Jim Bob and escapes before the man can kill him, causing Raylan and Jim Bob to open fire. While Raylan, Jim Bob, and Raul look for Nordstrom, Jared takes Phoenix, who manages to escape after stabbing his foot with a pitchfork. Enraged, Jared prepares to hit Phoenix, but Nordstrom attacks him with a handrake. He then finishes him off with a shovel, ignoring Phoenix as she begs him to stop before taking her with him. Outside, the three men hear the commotion and head back to the greenhouse, only to see Jared with a crushed skull. Devastated by his brother's death, Jim Bob wants to follow Nordstrom, but Raylan chooses to be more careful by letting his dog attack him instead. Meanwhile, Phoenix refuses to go with Nordstrom to the attic and demands to know the truth. However, as they argue, Raylan's dog runs upstairs and almost attacks them, but Nordstrom distracts the animal with a gunshot. He then orders Phoenix to hide in a room while he gets chased to the attic, where the dog relentlessly tries to attack him, but Nordstrom cages himself in a bedspring and prepares to shoot the dog, only to feel guilty upon remembering Shadow. At the same time, Phoenix escapes through the window and plans to abandon everyone, including Nordstrom, 
However, Raoul spots her and immediately takes her with him. Nordstrom hears her scream in the attic, so he traps the dog using the bedspring before leaving. Raylan orders his men to burn the entire house, despite his dog being in there. Nordstrom screams in frustration after sensing the fire, but still, he returns for the whining dog and sets it free. Unfortunately, Nordstrom gets trapped inside until he stumbles out the window, and lands on the greenhouse skylight that soon shatters, also losing his gun in the process. Devastated, Nordstrom makes his way to the lawn and sits there, feeling the heat from the fire. Later that night, Phoenix wakes up in an abandoned hotel and is greeted by Raylan, telling her that she's no longer a prisoner. He then shows her the open door and tells her she can leave if she wants to, but Phoenix chooses to ask the truth about herself. After learning that her real name is Tara, Phoenix leaves and plans to go to the shelter. Surprisingly, Raylan doesn't stop her, but she sees more gang members on her way out. When she's about to leave, Phoenix hears the lullaby that her mother used to sing to her. Suddenly, a woman in a wheelchair, Josephine, appears and asks to hug her. Feeling overwhelmed, Phoenix embraces her while sobbing. Raylan and Josephine then brings Phoenix back upstairs, where Josephine shows her the only photo of them together. Josephine then informs Phoenix about their business, before saying that she's dying because of the chemicals from the fire. As Phoenix drinks a glass of juice, Josephine reveals that she can't do anything about her illness, but a heart from a compatible donor will make her live longer. Phoenix quickly realizes their intention, but before she can do anything, she suddenly faints. Meanwhile, Nordstrom wakes up with a dog beside him and soon finds Hernandez's van nearby. After mourning her death, he gathers all the weapons he can use and puts Hernandez's bell and a leash on the dog before instructing it to go home. At the same time, Phoenix wakes up, handcuffed to a hospital bed. The surgeon beside her then tells her parents that he lacks equipment, so he needs to operate on the girl while she's still alive. Unable to control or say anything, Phoenix can only watch the surgeon and Josephine, who thanks her for her sacrifice. On the other hand, Raul expresses his disgust with what they're doing, but Jim Bob reminds him that Josephine must live, since she cooks the substance for their underground business. However, when the surgery is about to start, the power suddenly goes off, causing Jim Bob to check the main switch. As soon as he switches it on, Nordstrom appears beside him, so Jim Bob shoots him while the blind man defends himself with a machete. A bullet from Jim Bob's gun also ends up breaking a water pipe, and while Nordstrom is injured, that doesn't stop him from fighting for his life. On the other hand, Jim Bob swears to avenge his brother's death and manages to subdue Nordstrom. But just when he's about to finish off the blind man, Nordstrom breaks his arm and shoves the bell inside his mouth. Nordstrom can now hear every move he makes, and as soon as Jim Bob tries to pick up his gun, Nordstrom throws the hammer and hits him in the head. Without mercy, Nordstrom kills Jim Bob with a hammer to avenge his poor dog. Raylan hears Jim Bob scream and wonders how Nordstrom has found them, when suddenly, his dog walks in to drink water. Enraged, Raylan plans to leave with his family and the surgeon, and orders Raoul to kill Nordstrom. When Raoul and three other men head into the basement, they see Nordstrom lying in a pool of water. They're unaware that he can detect their steps, so as soon as the three men approach him, Nordstrom gets up and shoots them consecutively. Still feeling bad, Raoul informs Nordstrom that they're going to kill Phoenix, before directing him to the exit, where Nordstrom can catch up to the escaping criminals and the girl. Meanwhile, Phoenix manages to speak and tells her parents that Nordstrom will kill them all. The surgeon then bails on them, but suddenly, Nordstrom attacks him in the dark. Scared, Raylan shoots the window to allow light inside the building. He then approaches the dead surgeon. While on the other hand, Nordstrom uses cans of insect fumigator to give himself some cover. The blind man doesn't waste time and repeatedly attacks Raylan with his machete, until eventually, Raylan loses his patience and starts randomly firing at him. Unfortunately, Raylan accidentally kills Josephine, leaving Phoenix struggling to break free from the handcuff that binds her to her mother. Josephine's body slumps against the wheelchair's controller, causing it to move towards the empty swimming pool. Meanwhile, Nordstrom loses his machete when he tries to attack Raylan. As the men fight, Phoenix tries her best not to fall into the empty pool with her mother by hooking her feet to the ladder. With no other choice, Phoenix grabs the machete nearby and begins hacking off Josephine's arm, but still falls into the pool with her. On the other hand, Nordstrom gets distracted by Phoenix's scream, giving Raylan a chance to slice his stomach. But suddenly, Raylan's dog attacks him, so he throws the dog into a room and seals it with a massive oven. Nordstrom then manages to pin Raylan against the oven, using his thumbs to gouge his eyes out until Raylan passes out. Moments later, Phoenix climbs up from the pool, but Nordstrom warns her to stay away from him. He confesses to being a killer, adding that he is a monster and not a father. He also tells Phoenix that she shouldn't be around him, even though he knows how painful it'll be to be away from her. However, Phoenix refuses to go, but when Nordstrom yells at her, Phoenix finally walks away. 
Unfortunately, things aren't over for Nordstrom. Raylan suddenly stabs him in the back and nearly slits his throat, when Phoenix shows up and kills her father using Nordstrom's machete. Raylan staggers until he falls into the empty pool with his wife, leaving Phoenix with a dying blind man. Phoenix cries as she insists on saving Nordstrom, but the blind man tells her that she already has. Nordstrom then takes his last breath, and Phoenix cradles in her arms the person who's treated her like his own daughter. Hoping for a fresh start, Phoenix leaves the abandoned hotel and heads into the shelter, where she asks the children if she can join them. Then, when a girl asks her name, she introduces herself as Phoenix. Later on, Nordstrom's fingers move a bit when Raylan's dog licks them, implying that he's still alive. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.